Hi, I'm Trey Pearson, and this is Bridge the Atlantic. Welcome to Bridge Atlantic's interviews, where we get to know the people behind and in front of the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcio Novelli from Canada, a man who wears many hats, literally and figuratively. When I'm not releasing music under my own name or my side project, Midnight Soundtrack, I'm producing and mixing records for other artists or directing and editing music videos and music documentaries. <laughs> Before we jump into the interview, (laughs) we just want to let you know that we are on Patreon and you can support us from as little as a dollar per month. Your support allows us to keep bringing you these interviews and keeps the lights on here at Bridge the Atlantic. That's right. And don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube so you don't miss any episodes. Up until the end of 2017, we're actually giving away a free shirt for every 100 new subscribers we get on YouTube. So one of those shirts can be yours. Just click subscribe and you're enrolled. (laughs) Yeah. I think it sounds like school. <laughs> I know. Well, you have your chance to win. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you have your chance to win. All right. So joining us this week out of Ohio is singer-songwriter Trey Pearson. With his band Everyday Sunday, Trey has sold hundreds of thousands of records and amassed millions of streams. He scored five number one US singles and 20 top 10 hits. His song Wake Up, Wake Up was the most played Christian rock song of 2007, and his 2009 album Best Night of Our Lives broke onto the coveted Billboard 200 chart. Trey's toured in all 50 states and 20 countries, playing with musicians such as Switchfoot and Reliant K. Recently, Trey came out as gay and made national news. His announcement started a national conversation with a television appearance on The View. It has been covered by The New York Times, Billboard Magazine, CNN, and more, as he became the most trending topic worldwide on Facebook. His first solo EP, Love is Love, was just released, and we're excited to hear more about that. Get to know Trey! and hear the advice he has for his fellow musicians. So, welcome to the show, Trey. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Um, Let's get awkward right off the bat. Tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Three things about myself that everyone should know. Um, Yeah, well, you said a lot of them, but uh, one is that I used to be on a big Christian record label, uh, and uh, two would be that... uh, I have kids, two beautiful kids, and uh, three, I love to uh, write songs and spill my shit about my life for the world to hear. So (laughs) there's three things for you. you Uh, Thank you. And so, Trey, given the success that you had with Everyday Sunday, do you feel pressure to achieve similar success with your solo material? Uh, No, I don't think so. Uh, You know, I... uh, I'm not really sure what to expect. I think I've been trying to uh, not think a whole lot about that. Uh, I I mean, I definitely want people to hear it. And I I would say that I'm uh, a pretty uh, driven person to try to um, do do everything I can to give myself a a chance to share my art with people. But at the same time, uh, I don't know. I just have felt very inspired uh and and music has been very therapeutic for me uh, as i've been sort of going through everything i've gone through this last year and a half and uh and so it's it's brought out a lot of creativity that honestly like um i feel like i've been able to tap into something that i have never been able to tap into even even as an artist before and so i think maybe when your whole life you've suppressed this major part of who you are uh, and then all of a sudden this valve bursts open uh releasing that to yourself let alone other people for the first time ever to finally accept that for for myself um i think that valve really burst open creatively for me as well so i'm just i'm insanely proud of what this new album is and it's it's by far the best thing I've ever done before, and I, I hope that uh, more people hear it than any any of my other stuff. But I don't feel like a pressure for that either. I guess. Cool. Well, that's good news. <laughs> 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 so, as, when you, uh, as an LGBT artist, right? Do you feel you have a responsibility to the community um, to be, say, a role model? You know, particularly to Christians who are perhaps struggling with their sexuality. 
Because that can be a bit of a, you know, dichotomy and a bit, a bit of a, a struggle within, you know, being who you are, but also being in a particular religious group. You know, I, I mean, it depends on where you are in that religious group, of course, because um, s- some sects can be a bit more accepting than others, right? Um, so I know you created a Facebook group for this very reason. Yeah, I haven't felt any sort of pressure, uh, but I, I don't know if you should feel a pressure. I have felt a passion uh, to do so, a, a passion to um, just thinking about uh, how difficult it was to accept myself growing up and realizing that by um, by being vocal, I have the chance to help somebody else to keep from going through what I did. Uh, I desire to do that, you know, and, you know, I think, um, I think about how, if there would have been somebody that would have been able to be outspoken for me growing up, how that could have impacted my life. And I do, I do know older artists from the Christian music industry that, um, that are still closeted to this day and they deal with a lot of their own guilt and shame. Some of them do, some of them don't. And, uh, and, you know, I just think it sucks how, like how much is hidden, especially in that industry. Like, and it's not just being gay, it's all kinds of things because they want it to fit this certain box of what their consumer expectation is. And so it leads to a lot of hiding and a lot less vulnerability that you find in art so many other places. And it's sad that, you know, something that's supposed to be, uh, so, um, I don't know, Christ-like is so, uh, disingenuine and um and there's such a lack of transparency and when you came out um as lgbt you made national news yeah did you expect such a reaction and um and what has that what kind of impact has that media attention had on both you as an individual and as a musician yeah uh no i didn't expect that at all you know i mean i, I don't think anyone did i think uh I, I had a, a little bit of success in the Christian music world and um, had done decently well for myself. I'd, I've been able to do music full time uh, my entire adult life, which is uh, an amazing thing to get to do. Uh, so I, I, I knew people would talk about it. And when you've played in, uh, you know, all over the country and all over the world and, and even lots of churches uh, all over the world, uh if there's a place that gossip can spread, it's the church. <laughs> and so, yeah, I knew people would talk about it, but um, I guess I, I I didn't realize it would be that talked about to, um, you know, look on Facebook and, you know, see that it was trending. And then all of a sudden by that night that the story had kind of broken, uh, that it was um, the number one trending topic in the world. And like right under me was Calvin Harris and Taylor Swift breaking up. And I was like, how am I more talked about than that? Like, that's just kind of mind blowing. And then the next morning um, is actually when the view called. So it had already broken on the New York times and billboard magazine and um, some of those places uh, before I'd actually gotten a call from the view to ask me to come on and talk, talk about it. But yeah, so it's uh, I, it was very, um, surprising but also felt like a beautiful opportunity to take everything that had really hurt me for my entire life and to be able to use it to help other people and to see how many people it was connecting with and uh to have a chance to hopefully make a difference in so many people's lives and i really feel like i've gotten that opportunity and i'm continuing to get that opportunity uh since my story came out last last summer um I've just gotten thousands and thousands of messages from people and continue to do so every week, almost every day, sometimes multiple times a day, uh, just people sharing their hearts back to me. And uh, it's really beautiful. And I I, I feel, uh, yeah, like I said, passionate about the opportunity to try to be able to help other people uh, that have gone through similar things or are going through similar things that I did. That's fantastic. Um, why don't we move into the record a little bit? Uh, which, which definitely, like you said, uh, this whole, all of this has inspired this new record. Um, you know, it, it just came out, which is exciting. Um, this is your solo record. What can people expect from it? Um, yeah, the, I, th- I think the biggest thing is a few things. The album's called love is love and which is such an anthemic, uh, phrase, especially in the LGBTQ community. Um, 
I wanted to, there were so many things that I wanted to express in this, in this album. And I also didn't want to make it, uh, this being my first album, it's kind of a mini album. It's seven songs, but it's also, um, one of these things that I really wanted to express a huge range of the emotions that I've gone through, uh, over this last year and so i really feel like i was able to to do that and i think it just felt like it was pouring out of me and being selective to how i could try to pack as much of that possible into this record but also make it short enough that it's palatable to a generation that likes to just find a song on spotify or itunes or whatever and um or youtube and and don't tend to listen to a record front to back i wanted it to be short enough that hopefully i can grab people and uh get the opportunity to hopefully capture them on the first song and and listen all the way through uh the seventh song it is pop music but it's it's very uh honest pop music i think um it's very vulnerable and each song is very much about uh my story and my life and uh i wanted to do that in the way that uh i i know how which is the way that i've been influenced and 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 so i think you know another thing with this record is musically i've really been able to take stuff that has influenced me from growing up as a child to where i am today and really been able to um kind of bring all those influences into who i am and that's been fun about starting over as a solo artist with my with my old band everyday sunday uh you know i started that band when i was 16 years old and signed a record deal after my first year of college so i was very influenced by what i was influenced by at the time uh you know as a teenager and uh young adult and so um to be able to grow up a little bit and to have the chance to kind of go back and take stuff that really influenced me more uh, growing up that made me lo- fall in love with music uh, as a kid, starting over as a solo artist, uh, allowing the chance for this sort of almost like fresh landscape or, you know, fresh palette to, uh, to create something and have no preconceived expectations uh, has, has been really fun as well. Awesome. awesome. Are you ready for 20 questions? 20 questions. Yes. Let's do it. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Meat. Ashamedly. Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Indie or major? Uh, pff, major. Come on. It says lightning round, lightning round. Yoga or yogurt? Uh, yogurt. <laughs> the blacklist or 24? 24. Education or experience? experience marvel or dc dc new york or los angeles new york talent or attitude Uh, attitude football or basketball basketball ryan gosling or ryan reynolds Woo, ryan gosling (laughs) i'm i'm with you on that one the office or arrested development the office batman or superman batman Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? (laughs) Michael Jackson. (laughs) Taylor Swift or Taylor Lautner? Oh, Taylor Swift. Whale or Kale? Whale or Kale? That's everyone's reaction, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Whale. Bette Midler or The Riddler? The Riddler. And your final, most important, potentially heartbreaking question... Is Ross or Marcio? Oh, wow. I can't. I can't do no? it. You're not going to no. do it? I'm not going to do it. You passed the test. Well done. <laughs> you really did. It's a test. What advice would you offer to LGBT artists who are worried about the impact coming out could have on their career? You know, what could they take from your experience? I would say knowing how much pain people go through to accept themselves um, and how important it is to be a voice to give someone a chance to accept themselves, that your career 
pales in comparison to how important it is and how much of a chance you might have to save a life. Um, I don't know. I say, say your career every time uh, like that, that that's great. And you be passionate about what you're passionate about, but if it's not genuine, if it's not sincere and if it's not something that you would rather put something that matters more over it, then it doesn't, then it doesn't matter in the first place. And looking back at your career, is there anything that you would do differently knowing what you know now? Yeah, of course. Uh, gosh, you know, I think like when I first started touring, uh, being a kid that ended up in a youth group, grew up in a conservative church, ended up in a youth group as a teenager, um, very impacted by what I was told was Christian music and kind of the whole Christian music machine and bubble. Uh, I think I went into this industry very wide eyed, believing that, um, I could make a difference, uh, in people's lives. And I, you know, hopefully I did in a way, but I also realized very quickly into my career, how much stuff was hidden and happened behind closed doors. And, um, and it took me a long time to realize how much that I was hiding even from myself and how much I couldn't accept myself for. And so, you know, if I could go back and accept who I was, uh, I would do it in a heartbeat, except for the fact that I, I do have two beautiful kids that I wouldn't trade for the world. So life happens. Um, but yeah, you know, any chance I could to uh, find freedom and give other people freedom, I desire to do that. That's beautiful. I think uh, for those tuning into this right now that might not be as familiar with you, could you tell us how do you reconcile your Christian beliefs and your your acceptance of yourself as a homosexual? How do, maybe maybe there are I think that's something that a lot of Christians um, and non Christians like myself can find. Um, conflicting or confusing, you know, so I'd really absolutely love to hear um, what you have to say on this topic. Yeah, I would, I would say the quick answer is just that uh, I grew up in an in, in evangelical Christian culture that almost worships the Bible more than they do the God that they supposedly believe in. And so there's this kind of Bible worship that happens, especially in Western Christianity, uh, that uh, people think that being a Christian is having to believe that God wrote every word of the Bible. And if you don't believe that, then you can't be a Christian. But like, you know, some kind of like displaced reality happens when you grow up in that culture, because I read the Bible as a teenager six times, front to back. I memorized the book of James. I was in this thing called Bible Bowl, where I would answer trivia questions, like weird stuff. And I desperately wanted to know how to love God with everything. But I went in with this preconceived idea that God had written everything in this Bible and all the books and the way it was put together was uh, ordained by God. And it took me a long, long, long time to realize, wait, like when I study like the words of Jesus and what people wrote down, that's not even something like the person that I'm supposedly a follower of ever asked me to put my faith in. Like God never asked you to put your faith in. Uh, if you're a Christian, um, God, Jesus, whatever, uh, never asked you to put your faith into believing that God wrote every word of the Bible. And what Jesus did say to put your faith in was that there is a God who loves you. And, um, and the only way we can understand what it is to love God is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we get so lost on that original message of Jesus because we're so consumed by the uh, traditions and weird cultures that we've created as, as humans. Yeah, you know, I think there are six references total in all the books of the Bible to uh, same-sex relationships. Um, some have to do with rape, some have to do with temple prostitution. None of them have to do with the idea of what it means to be in a committed relationship with another human being of the same sex. People didn't understand um, 
same sex relationships that way back then it was always oh you're expected to marry the opposite sex and have a family and if you were gay or bisexual or or whatever you were expected to do that behind closed doors and i think that's the stuff that the bible was speaking against but i don't know that the people that wrote those things would have had the capacity in their time and culture to understand what we understand now just like i don't think they had the understanding the capability to understand the idea that slavery didn't need to exist and that it was evil. And so there's all kinds of things that we've had to work through, uh, not only as Christians and what we believe about the Bible, whether it comes to slavery or women's rights or uh, same-sex relationships or, or whatever, but that the, these are things that we've had to work through as a, as a humanity. And so to ask, how do I uh come to accept it as a Christian, it's uh, the same question, I think, is how how have we been able to come to progress as as humans and, and to understand it's really crazy to think uh, that, that we shouldn't be able to find love, that we shouldn't be able to fall in love, that we shouldn't be able to experience love the same way anybody should be able to experience love in that um, intimate way. And... Uh, it took a long time for me to get here and to accept that. And I had to unlearn some things that I grew up with when it came to uh, even what I thought about the Bible. And I love the Bible. I'm more in love with it now, to be honest, than I than I ever have been. But I also see it in a totally different way than I grew up seeing it in our faith as a humanity. Uh, we just legalized in the United States uh, two years ago. We just legalized gay marriage nationwide. And so... Um, so it, we're not we're not at the end, you know. We're not at the finish line where this is some solved problem, uh, even uh, Christian or not. But I think we're making progress, and it's changing quickly. And um, you know, th- these are things that we've had to get through. I mean, before it was interracial marriage, that was a huge deal. Before that, it was uh, Jim Crow. It was uh, all kinds of crazy things, and. Um, and yeah, so I think, you know, for me, it was just like coming to a place in the progression of my faith where I was able to see my faith in a whole new way. And I think it's given me a greater love for my faith, a greater understanding, uh, not only of my faith, but uh, of myself. And I have never felt so free. I've never been so happy. And I'm very thankful to be where I am now. Jesus wasn't homophobic. He wasn't sexist. He wasn't racist. He was a pretty great dude. <laughs> but somehow along the line, everything else has been skewed. So that's even coming for me, someone who doesn't follow any particular religion. I th- and I think that you can, if you if you take everything else away, you know, and you just get down to the heart of it, there's a lot of beauty there. Anyway, Trey, thank you so much for that. That was that was beautiful. Um, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Uh, if you just go to treypearson.com, you can... Uh find all my social media. All my social media is at Trey Pearson. And uh, yeah, you'll see me there. Awesome. And you can find us as in Bridge Atlantic on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, and YouTube. Don't forget to visit our website and pick up one of these shirts while you're there. Absolutely. And I am actually working on my second full-length solo album. You can find details on how to be a part of that and pre-order it on my website, Marcionovelli. Dot com. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and Patreon, which are all my name, Marcio Novelli. And a beautiful name it is. And I am working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work and my blog at electrickiwi.co.uk. Just imagine a kiwi bird being electrified. Or maybe not you, Marcio, you're vegan. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. I just hate myself a little bit for saying that. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by 30 Roses, a virtual assistant and consultant to musicians and other creatives, as well as entrepreneur, music entrepreneur HQ and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes in the description. So please check them out because they do what for us. They keep the show alive. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would like to sponsor the show, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. We have recently updated our rewards, which now include sponsorship at the start of our interviews, as well as an opportunity for you to co-host an episode. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and iTunes so you don't miss any episodes and leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the show. Trey, this was a true pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We enjoy chatting with you. Absolutely. Glad we could finally make it happen.